Hey, welcome back. In this episode, you'll learn how to integrate the brand new embeddable pricing table, which allows you to build something just like this, where we might have a sort of good, better, and best model where we're gonna collect payment for different tiers. You can also do this with just a single tier. You can even do it with a one-time payment. Now on the left here, you'll notice that we have a, the startup tier and below it, it also includes features. So this is another brand new feature we're going to look at today is you can go through each of your products and define which features come with those products right inside of Stripe. Now, when you click on one of these buttons, it brings you to the checkout page, which is familiar and it includes all of the same styling and settings that you would have for Stripe checkout. But now you can really easily just embed this on any of your no code tools. It also works great with a custom website. And so today what we're going to do is go through a Rails application and add this to a Rails app. But first, let's talk about how we get this set up. So inside of Stripe, you'll want to create some products and prices along with those products. We've already got some products here. We have one for startup, business and enterprise. And if we were to look at the enterprise product here, you'll notice that there's this new thing called a feature list. So maybe for our enterprise product, what we can do is um, say that we want to add some features. We'll say like unlimited uh, projects. And you'll notice up here, I've, I've been using metadata to sort of uh, work around this, but now there is first class support for these features. So now we can add another one here, maybe advanced analytics. So if we save the product, you'll notice that now we have a list of features that are associated with this product. So that's pretty cool. Now down below, we've got two prices already set up. These are both for uh, US dollars. One is $48 a month. The other is $480 per year. And if we wanted to, we could set these up so that when someone goes through checkout at the $48 option, we give them an option to upsell to the $480 per year option. And we've always had this ability to create a payment link. So we could say, okay, yeah, we want to create a payment link for this $48 a month um, product. And we're going to collect all of um, the customer's address maybe. And we want to also maybe collect their billing address. There's some advanced options here that allow customers to pass in promotion codes. So we've kind of always had this concept of a payment link that you can use for a product. And that is a great tool that you can use if you want to collect payment for a single product. But what happens if you want to present this pricing table? Well, now there's this brand new feature called a pricing table. This is an embeddable pricing table. So we're going to go create one of these now. So if you go to products down in the bottom left uh, of the left hand menu, you'll see this new pricing tables feature where we can say create a pricing table. Here at the top, we're going to select our product. So we might say let's let's add our startup product, which here we're going to use this one that's $24 a month. And then we could say add another product. Let's add the business product. Okay, now we want to add, this is actually, we want the $32 per month one. Okay, 32 USD per month. And we can add a third product here, enterprise, $48 USD per month. Great. And you'll notice that the features we just added to the enterprise product are now showing below the subscribe button. Now, if we wanted to, we could also check this box, which will, uh, say that we are going to offer a trial for the startup mode. Now you'll notice that the button changes from subscribe to start trial. We could also add another price for the startup product. So if, it, if we wanted to offer both the monthly plan and the annual plan for our startup, what we could do is say uh, we have two different prices that we want to offer for the startup plan. And now we can select between monthly and yearly inside of this embeddable pricing table directly at the top. This is a really familiar UI um, for most subscription software. So we can add another price here for business. And as we're going along, that's how we're going to configure the multiple, multiple different uh, recurring intervals. You'll notice there's also a lot of different controls for the colors. So if you wanted to, you could get really fancy with this and maybe uh, maybe you want to make the background color some like bright pink color or something, and then you can make the buttons I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll bring the buttons down to like a darker purple. It looks kind of more like an ice cream, like an ice cream shop. And you can even change the font into a few different fonts, highlight a specific product in the middle. When you turn this on, you'll notice that this, this business product becomes the most popular. We could also highlight the startup product. This is another common tool when you're building a pricing page to enforce some sort of anchoring. Um, you can say, yeah, it's this best deal or most recommended or whatever. Um, these are a lot of different tools that allow you to experiment with kind of your, your pricing page to see how, uh, how that performs. Now on the next page, you'll have options for what you want to happen 
when someone checks out. So if, for instance, you want someone to redirect to a new page, then for every price, you'll come in here and configure that instead of showing a confirmation page, you want to redirect. Now, I don't have the tax codes selected for these products, so I would need to go back and update the tax codes if I wanted to automatically collect taxes as part of this. But um, I just wanted to kind of go through and say that if you wanted to redirect here, you would have to say like, um, you know, example.com slash thanks or whatever. You need to do that for each price. So we're gonna do it for the $24 USD a month. We're also gonna do it for the $240 USD per year. We have to select that we don't want a confirmation page, that we wanna redirect um, and so on and so forth for each of the different tiers. Okay, so that's something that you'll wanna go through and configure. But once you're done with this, all this, is, all this configuration is just sort of clicking around in the dashboard. You get this drop-in component that if you look closely at the top, it's a script tag, which is gonna load some new pricing table JavaScript. It's also going to install this brand new Stripe pricing table web component on the page. So we can copy this script tag and now we can drop it in a bunch of different places. So here's CodePen. We might drop this into CodePen. So we'll say copy the code. We're gonna drop it into CodePen. Now the pricing table will render down below inside of CodePen. You might also use this inside of Bubble. So for instance, here inside of Bubble, we'll insert a new HTML element. So we're gonna say this is gonna be our HTML element. We'll stretch it and we'll edit the appearance by dropping in our new pricing table. Now when we click preview, we're brought over to the preview page and now our pricing table is inside of a bubble site. Same thing with type tree. Maybe we can say slash embed here and then we wanna embed some, uh, some HTML code, we're gonna drop in our pricing table and now we have our pricing table available on TypeDream. So this is a really cool way that you can just really quickly drop in pricing tables that all are fully functioning. Let's say from the bubble page, we can refresh this and this is this should function. So we can click on subscribe and we're brought to Stripe checkout. If we're using our live keys and we have a live pricing table, this would actually collect real payment. Now, one other thing that you can do is the pricing table supports passing a client reference ID. So if you already have a logged in user and you want to associate the payment with that customer, then you can pass uh, another property to the Stripe pricing table web component and specify the client reference ID. So we've got this Rails application here. We're gonna walk through the whole process of how we might build out a pricing page. So if you click on pricing now, we're brought to this pricing route, but it doesn't actually have any content. We've already got a full uh, authentication system set up. So we can say test at example.com. Login is test at example.com. If we go to the dashboard, um, we would be redirected to that pricing page but there is no pricing page. So we need to build out this pricing page and we're gonna do that now. So let's jump into, uh, into Rails. We're gonna say Rails G controller pricings and we're gonna have a show route and that's gonna be the thing that contains our pricing table. Show html.erb. We can just delete those two lines and we're gonna go back to the Stripe dashboard, grab our pricing table code and drop it in. Now immediately, we should now be able to go to our routes and say resource pricing, remove that, and come back over here and refresh our pricing page. And we immediately have this new pricing page dropped in. So what we can do now is just to make this a little bit cleaner, I'm gonna wrap this in some, a couple of different divs. All right, now we have a little bit of coloring around it. I'm actually gonna swap this out for another pricing table that I have already set up with some custom colors that I really like. So we're gonna come back over here, very similar. We're gonna copy that code, drop in the pricing table, refresh the page here. And now you can see that we have a nice, beautiful pricing table set up for us. Now our business plan doesn't have the features listed below. That's because we haven't updated the product to have prices, but we have yearly, we have monthly, and we could go through the checkout flow and check out. However, there's one other piece that we can do because we're inside of Rails and because we have access to an authenticated user, we can say client reference ID here and pass in the current user.id. This will make sure that any webhooks that we receive that are associated with the checkout session for the customer going through the payment flow, we'll be able to tie back to our logged in user. So we can associate that back to our current user's ID. So now, 
what we want to do is go over to our pricing controller and make sure that everyone who goes to this pricing page is logged in. So we're going to say before action authenticate user. If we go to the dashboard, uh, again, we're not able to go to the dashboard without paying for this. So we're redirected back to the pricing page. We have a before hook that we add to every controller that ensures that the customer, if the customer attempts to access a paid feature, if they don't have an active subscription, they're redirected back here to this pricing page. Now, what's gonna happen is, as when we click on subscribe and go through the payment flow, several webhook events will fire. So here we can say test at example.com. And now we're gonna be sent a code. All right, we're logging in with link and subscribing with link because it's much faster than filling in our card de details. We'll click on subscribe. And now we're gonna be redirected back to this dashboard page. Now we're allowed to access the dashboard page and we can see that we have our Stripe customer ID. We have the ID of the subscription. We can tell that the subscription is active. So all of this was just by dropping in that code that we can uh, copy and paste from the dashboard. Now, if we look at the webhooks controller, we'll be able to see what's happening when we receive a notification about a checkout being successfully handled. So inside of our webhook controller, we are handling three different webhook events from Stripe. One is for the checkout session being completed. That's when someone finishes going through the payment flow. Let's take a look at that function now. So handle checkout session completed is, uh, right now it has quite a bit to it. First, what we're doing is we're grabbing the checkout session off of the data that was sent to us. And we're trying to look up a customer in, in our Rails database based on the ID of that Stripe customer. Now, if there is no Stripe customer, so if customer is nil, then we wanna create a brand new customer. So we're gonna um, find the user based on their client reference ID. We're gonna create a brand new customer for that user. Next, here, there's actually a bug here. <laughs> so next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna re-retrieve the subscription from the API using the ID of the subscription on the checkout session. And here we're actually also going to expand the, uh, the subscriptions items data price product. And what this does will make sure that the data about the product that we are subscribing to is included in the response here. It's included as part of that subscription that's coming back. This is the data from Stripe. And now we're gonna create a brand new subscription and in fact, we don't need to store this in a variable, but this subscription will be related to the customer that we either found or created. It'll also be related to, um, it'll have reference to the Stripe ID for the subscription. It'll have reference to the ID for the price that we subscribed to. It'll also have reference to the product name. Again, the price represents how much and how frequently to charge and in what currency, and the product represents what they're actually buying. So what we can do is from the price ID, we can determine what sort of features we want to enable or disable. Finally, we have the status of the subscription and we're also tracking the quantity. When configuring the pricing table, we can enable customers to set a specific quantity for what they are purchasing. And this is including sort of like a number of, potentially a number of seats that they might buy with the subscription. And so this quantity here will allow us to track what quantity the customer selected if we want to enable that option. Now that we have an active subscription, when we attempt to go to the dashboard route, we are permitted to do so because we have this active subscription, because we have a subscription that is either active or trialing. Now from the Stripe dashboard, you'll notice that there is a show button. This show button is actually, this is an, uh, a form that when clicked, it will send a post request to our server to this billing route. And this billing route is gonna enable us to redirect to the Stripe customer portal. Integrating with the Stripe customer portal is straightforward. You add this one API call and then you can redirect to the portal's URL. All right, let's walk through the process of changing our plan through the customer portal. So if we click on manage, we're gonna make that API call and then redirect to the URL that's returned on that, on that customer portal. Here we can do things like update our plan. So for instance, if we wanted to switch from the startup plan to the business plan, we could do so directly in the customer portal. We're gonna click confirm. Again, this is a Stripe hosted surface. All we needed to do to implement this was that one API call and the redirect on the server and then a button on the client. And now we have an updated plan. So now our customer is on the business plan. We can return to the demo if we'd like. When we return back here, you'll notice that we are now on the business plan. So you could imagine enabling or disabling features as people are changing their plans. 
But how is that actually wired up? We'll go back to the webhooks controller and look at another event type. So here we're listening for customer.subscription.updated. So let's handle the subscription updated event. When a subscription is updated, a post request is sent to that webhook endpoint, including the data about the new subscription or the new status of the subscription. Uh, and we're gonna first take that the ID of the subscription from the webhook, and we're gonna re-retrieve the subscription. And that's because we want access again to this price and product. And those are not included by default on the subscription data that's sent to us when a subscription is updated. So we need to turn around and make a get request to re-retrieve that subscription data so that we can then have the new product name and have the new price ID, et cetera. All right, so we're gonna find our subscription in the database by its Stripe ID, which we again stored when checkout was completed. And then we're gonna go through and update that subscription so that we can update our reference to the price, the product name, and the quantity. So that is how we update the subscription, and that's what happened when we were in the, the portal. Now, you may have noticed that when we were inside the customer portal, you also have the option to cancel a plan. Again, this is something that you can sort of configure from the Stripe dashboard, all the different features that are enabled in the customer portal. But here I could decide that I wanna cancel my plan. So I'm gonna say cancel my plan. And again, something that you can configure from inside of the customer portal is whether this is gonna cancel immediately or cancel at the end of the term. You'll notice that when we try to go back to the site, we're, we're now being redirected to the pricing page because our subscription is no longer active. So if we try to go to the dashboard, we're gonna be redirected back to pricing where we would have to resubscribe if we want access. So. It's a pretty basic implementation. Now let's take a look at the webhook handler for deleted. So when a customer's subscription is deleted, we're gonna handle this customer subscription deleted event where we look up the subscription in the database and we update the status to the status of the subscription that we received in the webhook event. So that's kind of the key pieces for our webhook handler. Today we learned how to integrate the embedded pricing table in a bunch of no-code platforms. We embedded it as part of a Rails application. The code for this will be available. We'll link down, uh, we'll link to it down in the description. At this point, you should be fully equipped to go out and set up a pricing table that is embedded and start collecting recurring payments or one-time payments. And you can even unlock this per seat pricing. There's lots of really cool stuff that you can do with this embeddable pricing table. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.